And welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, everyone. This is Keith again. And recently, AMD has finally launched the A12-9800, as well as the rest of the Bristol Ridge APUs and desktop CPUs. Well, they soft launched anyway, but they've been announced their launch. The A12-9800 will be coming in at $99, and then from there, it just goes down, which, in my opinion, isn't a terrible price. But you know we've been working with the A10 of the A12-9800 for quite some time. In fact, we've been trying to do some comparisons against the A10-7890K. But we've run into a bit of trouble. In fact, the first thing that we did was run it on an X370 and it was, ooh, it was really bad because the memory multiplier wouldn't change. We were stuck at 2133 at the best and uh, the CPU would run at 1.3 gigahertz. So we moved over to the Tomahawk and it ran Sort of fine, except until I realized the base clock was at 96 megahertz, which was throwing all of the clocks off. So we ended up getting a ASUS uh, B3, a Prime B350M-A motherboard, and that seemed to be working out just fine. But then we found everything was still locked, and we really couldn't overclock anything. And then we ended up moving back to the Tomahawk because the latest BIOS actually fixed the few problems that we had, but still had the CPU locked down. And performance was identical between the boards, so we sent back the Prime B350M-A because I really didn't need it if this board was going to work fine. So this is going to remain our dedicated APU testing system. Now according to AMD, the A12-9800 as well as the rest of the um, APU, the A-Series and Athlon CPUs are unlocked, but it's dependent upon the motherboard to unlock it, so the motherboard manufacturer. So at this point, I've checked all of the websites, looked for all of the BIOSes that have been recently released to see if that's the case, and well, they haven't been. So quite honestly, we're going to show, we're going to talk about 3D Mark Firestrike as well as some Dota 2 performance and why we're not reviewing this APU just yet. So it's coming, just not quite there yet until we can really unlock it and do something nice with it. In case you're wondering, yes it is running Dota 2, it's on the fast setting at 1080p behind me, so that performance should be indicative of something. Um, but jumping into Firestrike, I'm going to throw, go ahead and throw up a graph. Well, before that, let me be clear on the test system here. It's the A12-9800 on the B350 Tomahawk and running DDR4-2400. The A10 is running DDR3-2133. Both are set to 2 gigabytes for the iGPU and both are running stock clock configurations. So stock GPU, stock CPU clock configurations. So with that out of the way, let's throw up the numbers for 3D Mark Firestrike and take a look at how they compare to each other. The A12 does come ahead in all of these tests. In fact, it comes quite a bit ahead in the graphics test by a margin of around 400 points, which is closer to 20% faster, 20-25% faster, and a lot of that is due to the C the well the GPU frequency bump to 1108 instead of the 866 that the A10 has, but it also comes to advantage of the increased memory bandwidth as well. Physics shows a 300 point increase and combined shows almost a 100 point increase. All of these increases are very good. Like this is a good thing that we want to see. I'm very happy with these numbers. In fact, the first time I ran them, I said, wow, look at that. Big improvement. I like that because those numbers were close to what I could get with the heaviest overclock 7870K that I had. So the A10 pushed to its absolute max could achieve about those points for what a 65 watt TDP chip is performing out of the box at, which was pretty impressive and gave me some hope for once overclocking and unlocked comes. Um, now, for sake of comparison, and I'm going to throw these numbers back up just so you can see these while I'm comparing these other numbers, we've got an i5-6400 results that I saved, as well as a Haswell i3 and a GTA or a, a GeForce GT740, so with the GDDR5. So we're going to see how close this APU gets to, well, how it compares to a Skylake uh, uh, i5 with the iGPU, and then a dedicated i3 plus a dedicated graphics card. Now it's an older Haswell, it's not a newer one. I know I'm sure the Pentium G4560 would be a better bet at this point, but this is just some results that we had we wanted to compare it to. So graphics wise for the i5, the um, HD 630 got 958, whereas the GT740 got 2396. So the GT740 is only slightly faster than the A12's iGPU, which says once we get, you know, that's with DDR5 or GDDR5. So we get DDR4 3200 on the APU and we're likely to match or exceed that. So that's impressive. Uh, physics points, of course, the i5 and the, it won, won that, but the i3, it was, well, 
it was actually faster. The A12 was faster than the A3. That's nice to see. And of course, it is Haswell, so Skylake and KB Lake will be faster. And the combined was a bit faster, but way on the A3 and 740, but way lower on the A5. That looks good in itself, but that's not the end of the story. The story actually really begins, in my opinion, if you look back, and I'll put a link, a card in the corner, wherever that ends up, for the Dirt Rally performance comparisons, and you'll see the A10 and the A12 perform almost identically the same because of GPU throttling on the A12. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into Dota 2 gameplay. So this is a recorded match this isn't a bot match, this is a recorded match, and when you play them back, it is very indicative of gameplay performance, and they're both set to 1080p at the fast preset. So it's a preset, 1080p, fast. So it's not highest detail settings, it's not the absolute lowest, but it's designed for speed. And what you're seeing here is the A10 is actually faster. Even with a lower clocked, out of the box uh, C GPU and memory it's running faster and you can clearly see it's because of gpu utilization now my personal opinion here is what's going on is the a10 would throttle the cpu back to three gigahertz so no matter how high you had it overclocked once you load did a 3d load the igpu would take precedence over the cpu well with the bristol ridge what we're seeing is the cpu is not throttling whatsoever and it's staying at the four plus gigahertz clock range however do, because of that, and to stay within a 65 watt TDP package, the iGPU is taking the hit. So you're seeing it run at 40% upwards to 60%. And now, the catch here is, if you look at the graph and you see the lines moving, the A12 is actually running smoother. It's running a lower frame rate, but it is running more consistently. Whereas the A10 is bouncing around quite a bit, but still staying consistently higher. So that's gonna be something you have to take into consideration. The good thing is these APUs do support FreeSync. So if you're running a FreeSync monitor that has a FreeSync range that's, I don't know, it's gonna be enough. It, a more inexpensive one's probably gonna get you 40 to 75 hertz. So if you can stay between there, you're gonna at least get a smooth gameplay experience with it. But this is actually the reason why we're not gonna give it a full review yet, because if AMD is stating that it's unlocked and it's ready for overclocking, but the motherboard vendors haven't updated their BIOS, well, we're not really giving it its due, uh, des it's just dessert, I believe is the saying. So. I'm going to leave this playing so you can see that play out through the rest of the gameplay here, but this is kind of where we stand on it. We're going to hold back until the proper BIOS is out. Do we regret having picked up the A12-9800 early? No, because we've had some experience with it and it's going to give us a chance to deliver a bit better content as time goes forward and you'll be able to get a full review here including CPU performance graphs and we're probably going to pick up another Pentium just to be able to give you some comparisons to that because the price range is... It, it's kind of comparable to that. But again, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. If you found this video informative or entertaining in the least, feel free to leave a like, a subscribe, and a comment if you have any questions. And we will catch you all in the next video. Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack.